Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, we're going to be doing this horse silhouette image. It's fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do, but it has a real dramatic effect and can be used for all kinds of things. Now, to do this, we're going to be using two pictures. One is our background picture in there. The second one is a picture of a horse, and we'll be using just the layer mask from that picture of a horse. Okay, let's see how this whole thing is put together. I'll just close that file out. I have two files, one of the horse here, and here's a background picture, just a nice picture with a lake and a nice sunset. All we care about here is the top part of this picture. So the first thing I want to do, and I'll be using these floating windows here. If you don't know how to float your windows or they're not set up for that, just go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General, and make sure these two check boxes are checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode and enable floating document window docking. If those are checked, then you can either have your windows docked, which is like this, or you can just pull that tab down and then float the windows. And for this discussion, you really need to have your windows floating. So let's just drag this out. This is the reason why I want those floating, so I can drag my window out so it's real large like that. I can then extend our picture. Now it's going to be going off screen here, but you can see what we're doing pretty easily. I'm going to zoom out as much as I can so you get the idea. There we go. Now if you look at this picture, it's just kind of a dark area down there. It's about the bottom quarter of the picture. So if I divide it in half, I'll actually use my guidelines here. Now all versions of Elements don't have the ability to use guidelines, the later versions do, but you can still just kind of visualize this. This will help you visualize it. What we have here is the halfway point right there. Cut that in half again, and you have the bottom quarter. What I want to do is I want to move the horizon down to that point, and we'll do that just by stretching this picture. So first, it's a background layer right now, so if you double click on that background layer, it brings up this new layer dialog box and allows you to convert it from a background layer to a regular layer and it says automatically at layer zero. And then grab the bottom control handle and just pull that straight down and stretch the picture until the horizon comes to about that bottom quarter. It doesn't need to be exact for this picture but this just gives you an idea of what we're doing and choose OK. So that's what we're going for. OK, now I can shrink our box back down again. We can zoom back in. Here we go. Get our picture up where we can see it. There we go. We no longer need our guidelines. That was just for that one step. So we can just clear the guides out. So at about the bottom quarter is what you're looking for. Now I want to fill the rest of this area down here in with black. Easy way to do that is to set your color search to our default colors. Just click on the little icon right there. Make sure that black is in front, and then let's go over here to the shape. I'll grab the rectangular shape tool, and I'll pull it over there. Make sure that the color is black, and then simply go from the bottom left corner and go outside. Drag this up until it comes just below the horizon, like that. There we go. So that gives us a shape and just blocks the bottom part out. Now I need to convert this shape over into just a regular layer. So we're going to simplify the layer. Right click where it says shape and simplify layer. There it is. Now the reason for that, if I zoom in, is that the background here is not quite pure black. I have some orange down there. It's good along the edge, but there's a little bit of orange in here. So we're going to be just painting that out. So I'll grab the paintbrush and I'll move this over again so you can see that. I have mine set at, let's see, Oh, somewhere in the middle range here, about, about 20 on this picture looks pretty good, 20 pixels. And I'll set this as a soft edge. I'll go 21 right there, soft edge 21. That's pretty good. 
and then simply on that black layer just paint right along in here and up pretty close to the horizon edge. This just gets rid of that line effect. And so we're using the just the top edge here from the picture and then the black filling in from our shape. So just kind of paint along like that and just just hide that that edge. Just cleans that up. Okay, do that clear across. Check the other side. There we go. You can see here how it's real bright orange. We just want to get rid of that. So just come along and paint that stuff out. And come clear to the edge. There we go. Okay, so that gives us a nice clean bottom to this now. And let's just zoom out a bit. There you go. There's a full picture. Okay, we'll then be putting our horse in here. So I'll grab the horse picture here. Notice how I just docked that. Let me show you that one again. You can dock this just by grabbing it up and dragging it up back into the dock position. Notice that little light blue line kind of shows around there when I do that. When you see that and you see it kind of goes transparent, let go and that redocks. It makes it easy to work with this one and that just stays in the background for us. Okay, grab the background layers, the only layer on this picture. Drag that over like that. Now you can get both of these pictures the sunset picture and the horse picture. These are, are both available on my website on the material support page for this video. So just go over there to get those pictures. Okay, I need to now bring the horse size down. Easy enough to scrub the upper left hand corner and drag that down and position him about where he looks good. So something about like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just if I'm visualizing a center line, which would be right around in here somewhere, right about nine, visualizing a center line, and if his head is right on that center line, then his tail is not quite to the back edge. It's not quite half the size of the picture. That's kind of what I'm going for. And just get him basically positioned somewhere in here. We can adjust him a little bit once we have this thing finished, but you know, put him up about that big. Again, if I put the tail right against the edge, like that. And if you look at your rulers up here, these are set for inches. If I right click on this, you can see these are set for inches. So if you're looking at this and it's 17 and 3 quarter inches over here on this particular image, if you put his tail right against the back left edge here, and then it's just about at the 9 right there for the whole picture. That'll give you the exact same size I'm using. But just something you know about about that big is what we're looking for in here. And we'll bring him in so he's you know mostly left hand side and his head's kind of right in the middle of the picture right there. The eyes kind of right in the middle of the picture. Okay now we need to make a mask out of him and on this kind of a shape you can use all kinds of tools to make your mask. Normally when I'm doing anything that has a hard edge like this or a relatively hard edge I'll just use a regular tool and we'll be using the polygonal lasso tool for this. If it's a soft edge like we have here with the feathering of the tail and a little bit up here, we'll use a refined edge on that and then a little bit of cleanup. Now the reason I'm not using the refined edge on the whole thing is because on a picture like this, especially on pictures with grass, for whatever reason, refined edge has a hard time with that and you tend to get the mask bleeding into the image. So we can just get around that by doing as much as we can the old fashioned way and then using refined edge for just the parts that we want to. So I'll start right here and I'll zoom in a bit more so I can get a real nice clean edge on this. And when you're doing this kind of edge, you want to be just inside that part. The little, little edge right there you can see. I'm going to zoom in so you can really see that. So right along the edge here, there's kind of like a little gradient right there. You want to be right in the middle of that bit when you're doing this. Okay, let's just zoom out again. Go right to there. And I'll start right about here. It doesn't matter where you start. I'm just kind of picking the spot at the bottom of the main there just to have something to start off with. Now with this tool, you click and then you can choose your next position and then click in your next position. If you're doing a curve, just do lots of little short segments. The reason I like this tool is that it's very controllable. I can come in here and be very careful as to where I place each of my points. When you get to an edge here, just hold the space bar down and it turns into a moving hand. You can kind of move things around and let go and you're back to your tool again. Now on the 
tail, I'm going to come just outside of the tail and we'll use the refined edge to clean up that part of the image and then we'll adjust that refined edge. So I'll just come down along here and come out around here. Now it's a little bit tricky right here where it overlaps the other horse. This will take a little bit of work to fix this out. Now the one thing I want to do is I want to make sure I don't get that eyeball in there. So I'm going to cut that off just around the eye like that. That'll make it a little bit easier. And then just work around the tail hairs. Now it's not going to be perfect on these. This is one of those things that's just really too fine, even for a fine edge to do. So it'll take a little bit of painting on the mask to pull that up. Notice down here that I have my feathering for this set at one pixel. So it just it's very, very, very soft edge to that. Just real thin, real small, soft edge. It just helps to blend that in nicely. And I'm working with the new selection. Now at this point, I'm going to pause the video and I'll just finish the selection on this horse and I'll bring the video back up as soon as that's done. Now for the part between these back legs right here, once the outside selection is made, I'll then change over here to remove, there it is, remove or subtract from selection, and then I'll just take out that little bit. Okay, so I'll pause the video for just a moment here. I'll finish the selection as soon as it's done. I'll bring the video back up again and we'll do that refined edge part of this. And there we go. There's the basic selection. Notice I've gone around the tail, of course, as we saw that. I also went around the front hair here and a little bit right up at the top there. We're now going to clean those sections up using Refine Edge. So that's Select and Refine Edge. There's our Refine Edge tool. I normally use this on the overlay setting. There are different settings that you can use in here, but I think overlay is kind of nice. Okay, I'll just put that to the side. Leave all the rest of your settings alone in here. Don't touch any of that stuff and we'll just use the basic setting. Now on the size of the brush to use, what you want, let me just zoom in here a bit, what you want is a brush that's large enough to allow you to overlap the mask and your, your image, but not too much larger than that. And we'll be using the Refine Edge Radius tool, you can see right there, so the size on this particular picture comes out to be about 17 is about the right size. These sizes will change depending upon the image you're working on and so forth. To move the image around, hold the space bar down. Gives you a little hand in there. You can then drag the image around. Okay, so to do this, just paint right along the edge, just right over that border of those two colors, or that, that the mask, the orange-red color out here, and then your image. And just come in and paint around and we'll see how it looks once it's finished. It's going to need some adjustments, especially around in here. It's a very tricky part and difficult for the Refine Edge tool to really do that well. So this will have to be done a bit manually in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm holding the space bar down. I did a little bit over here on the front leg. There we go. There's a little bit of fur on that back leg, so I did a little bit right in there. And we'll just do that and then up here at the front of his head a little bit around there there we go and a little bit right across the top up here okay that gets all those parts now we can output this so I'll put this to a new layer with layer mask what that does is that keeps our original down here untouched and it hides that and then here's our new layer with a layer mask we can now see the edges and see where it needs some work. It's kind of hard to see here unless it's, you get that kind of little little spot showing, but the orange in the background is a bit distracting. So I'm going to put a new layer here above this layer. There we go. And I'll just fill that layer with black, just like that. And you kind of see that looks pretty good on the black. And let's do another new layer, and we'll fill this layer with white. So you can then switch between these two colors to look for little problems on that mask. You see one right here showing up on the white pretty easily. So go up to our layer mask image. That's our horse up here. Click on the right side. Make sure you see that light blue outline. That's your layer mask. And to hide, you paint with black. To show, you paint with white. So I want to hide that. Go to our paintbrush. It's still at the soft setting. That's fine. 
and maybe a little bit smaller on that. I want to hide this stuff so let's change our colors to black and then we'll paint right in that layer mask using that black color. We can just hide that little bit of kind of dirty mask in there. Just like that. Okay, that looks good. Hold the space bar down. Check the front of the horse a little bit right in here. It needs to be cleaned up. And right along the edge. That part of the of the horse's mane looks okay in there. I'll leave that alone. Let's just hold the space bar down, check down here. You can see how it's really kind of messy in here. So this is going to take a bit of careful work just to edge out of leaving a little bit of it in there on the hair. That's fine. I just want to have it a little bit rough along that edge for that hair. That looks good. Okay, space bar, and let's drag it over here to the tail. This would be the worst part of this. It's not actually too bad. See, and here's kind of messy, kind of messy around here. So I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to paint a little bit in here and clean up what I can. And then we're going to have to change the brush size. Now, whenever I'm working on something like this, where I have you know, filaments or hair or whatever, I normally will try to pull away or pull out from whatever it is I'm trying to mask. Let me just get this outside stuff cleaned up first. There we go. That looks pretty good up there. And get that little bit off there. So I'll pull from the inside to the outside. Now my brush is too large. I'll bring the brush size down. Let's take it down to about seven. That's better. And I'm just going to pull out like that. Just little movements out and try to build in again some of that hair shape. We'll go down one more size on the brush here in just a minute. And whenever you see the picture move, I'm holding down the space bar like that. There's my little hand tool. And I'm just pulling it out and moving the picture around. And the reason I have it docked at this point is because I'm zoomed in. So that's fine. I have the size I want and I want to see my controls down here. So docked is really good to see your controls and then undocked is good if you need to have a larger picture being shown. Okay, let's bring our size down here to about three pixels on my brush, real small size, and just kind of come in here and get these little bits. I just want to break up that large blob that was right there and just kind of thin this out a little bit in here. Again, I'm pulling outwards when I'm doing this. And that seems to give a better effect. And it's a little more than we're almost almost done. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's now zoom out, hold the Alt key down, zoom out. We should see a nice looking horse sitting on that background. That looks fine. We can now hide our two test backgrounds in here. I'll refloat this. There we go. And now I can make the window larger like that. And we'll zoom out again, hold the Alt key down. Here's our full picture. Okay, so we can get our horse positioned about where you want. Now if you have anything like this happen, you pull it out and you see like that, you can fix that up on the mask easily enough. Make sure you're on the mask over here. Go to your paintbrush. Pick a nice large size on that. So there's about 85 or so, 81, and then just paint that out. Again, I'm just painting on the mask itself with black. Okay, now I can move my horse around. I think right about here is good. Again, he's not quite exactly at the middle, at his head here, and not touching the back. So somewhere around in there is real nice. He's kind of looking into the bright area here. See his, his eye line kind of looks at the bright area. Nice visual bit. Okay, all we need to do now is just to convert this into that silhouette look, and that is real easy to do. So what I want is to make a new layer above this layer. Double click over here so you're on the image side, and then new layer right above that one. Fill this layer with black. So it's invert our colors again, make sure that black is your foreground color. Go to the paint bucket and click in there. You have a black layer. Back to the Move tool. Come down to the layer mask on this side. Make sure you see that light blue outline. Hold the Alt key down and drag that straight up. And that copies the layer mask from here up to there. 
So all we're now seeing through the black layer is just what's inside that layer mask, and there's our silhouette. Now the last thing we may need to do is a little bit of fine-tuning adjustment or so around, around the edge here, a little bit of an outline showing there. We can clean that up. Let's just zoom in. That's going to be on the layer mask itself, so make sure you're on the layer mask over here and hide that. Actually, there it goes. That was just a, a bleed over, so that's fine. So once we hid that horse, we lost that little bit. So see there's the horse showing in there. Hide that, and that goes away. If you still see something, you can actually just you know paint more over here and just kind of hide that out. Okay, there it is. Let's now zoom out and look at our whole picture. And I'm seeing a little bit of, of a black line on the right-hand side. You see over here, see that, that white on the layer mask over there on the right-hand side? We need to hide that. So make sure on the layer mask, look at that light blue outline. Go to your paintbrush, make sure you're on black, and then just paint over here on that side to extend the layer mask out over there. That was just shown because we moved the layer mask around a little bit. So extend your layer mask out, and we'll go clear to the bottom. And there we go. So there is our horse silhouette picture. And again, easy to do, simple steps. The only real hard part about the whole process is just doing a nice quality selection to make a nice clean layer mask. But there you go. That's how to do a silhouette picture against a sunset sky. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 